So we just wrapped up a study of the book of Hebrews in the young adult class and um, was working with Hayden on that class. Hayden started a really neat practice here. So in every class, we had this section devoted to Greek vocab. And so we were looking in depth in some of the words that were located uh, and uh, taught in the book of Hebrews to get some deeper meanings, making sure we understood context, application to the Hebrews, and application to us as well. So one of the words really stood out to me, and we find it in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, where he says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So the Holy Spirit picked a very interesting word when he picked that word exercised for the writer of Hebrews. So we're going to focus on that tonight. And if we do a, a deep dive into some of the lexicons about the meaning of that word, many of them refer to the root of that word tying back to the exercise programs of the Greek athletes as they train for the games, the Olympics, whatever. And so one of the uh, lexicons says to train as the Greek athletes, generally to exercise or to train. Another one says to exercise vigorously in any way, either the body or the mind. And a third one says to experience vigorous training and control with the implication of increased physical or moral strength. So the key point here is what we, what the Hebrews were exhorted to do and what we in turn are exhorted to do are to exercise spiritually to the same level that the Greek athletes were training to compete in the games of the Olympics. So the question for consideration for us tonight is how's our spiritual exercise program? And if I'm going to draw an analogy to the physical world, I'm obviously not in shape. And my two key exercise consists of forklifts at dinner every night and stretching programs when I lay out on the couch and complain that I ate too much. And I compare that with how we see athletes training and I say, I've got a long ways to go if I'm going to get in shape like they are. So what about our spiritual exercise program? Are we lacking the exercise that the Hebrews were encouraged to be doing? Or are we fully engaged to the same depth that the Hebrews were supposed to be doing? So look at some of the key phrases that describe that word exercise. Vigorously, increased moral strength training the mind. This doesn't sound quite like we're picking up the Bible maybe once a week to read a few verses, or that we're just attending one class a week and that's all we're doing. No, it sounds like there's much more in-depth involvement here with our spiritual training and our spiritual work. So I see the words discipline, and we understand God's word as a result of doing that, and better be able to apply God's word when we do that. And we think of athletes in training, especially for the Olympics, and we, we look at that comparison and say, are we even breaking a sweat as we're working and exercising spiritually compared to what athletes do training for the Olympics? So our efforts with the word enable us to become teachers. And if you look at the other parts of Hebrews that we were reading about, they were being chided for after a long period of time that they weren't teaching or able to teach like they should. So our efforts enable us to do that. It enables us to give a defense of our faith when we are challenged by those that don't believe. It enables us to edify and exhort and admonish our brethren. It enables us to grow and mature as Christians. So without this spiritual exercise, we end up remaining babes in Christ and never grow to spiritual maturity. So our exhortation for tonight is to make sure that we're looking at our spiritual exercise program to the same extent that we would look at our physical exercise program. We do need to be breaking a sweat. We do need to be vigorous. We need to be diligent about what we're doing so that we can make proper application, own our own knowledge of good and evil, and be better able to teach others and to edify our brethren. So tonight I'd like to encourage us all to be more involved with one another in our classes, in our one-on-one -on -one discussions, and in our own personal studies that we go deep and exercise vigorously in these aspects. And if you're here tonight and you're not yet a Christian, and you are studying to some extent, and you realize that your exercise program needs some work, we're here to help with that. And whether it's study or prayer or sitting down together to better understand God's word, we're ready and able to help you with that. If you have been studying and have come to the realization that you need to obey God and be baptized to wash away your sins and begin your life with Christ, we're ready to help with that as well. Whatever your need tonight, we invite you to come forward as we sing our closing song.